so good morning again and uh, welcome to the second lecture of uh, memory design and test course uh, today we will look at uh, memory types and optimizations and uh, we will look at uh, hopefully we will also get to look at uh, the the design flow or the signal flow inside the memory uh, a typical signal flow inside the memory and then subsequently if time permits we will also get to look at one of the data sheets so that we get a view of what kind of features are usually available inside a memory hmm? so uh, but, but before we enter into all that why do we need to talk of memories and uh, why why all this hoo ha in the first place so the reality is that there is memory some kind of memory very widely spread out in the entire system there are very fast registers and data paths uh, there are memories which are operating at processor speed uh, which are inside the processor there are level 2 caches level 3 caches and then off chip memories like drams and hard disks so memories are so so pervasive in our uh, electronics ecosystem that uh, how they function how to make use of them how to design better memories all this understanding can help us really leapfrog and transition into next level of uh, ppa efficiency ppa all of you remember what is ppa yes sir what is ppa performance area yeah power performance and area for any vlsi system these are the three parameters which which should which a designer should always keep in sight hmm? one should always have a sight of how is the performance of the system evolving how is the area which would result in cost of the system evolving and how is the power changing uh, so all of us understand why all these three parameters are important ppa all three are important why hello yes sir why is power important to reduce the losses like heated if more power consumes it will cost yes if more power consumes uh, there are multiple things all of us are using mobile devices portable devices if our chips and if our uh, systems consume more power then we have to recharge our devices more often or to reduce that frequency i have to use a bigger battery bigger battery means bigger more system cost uh power also means uh whatever power is consumed also means heat dissipated so if the power consumption is very high then i also have to put in place sufficient mechanisms to dissipate that heat to you know to remove away that heat from the uh, system level so uh if you have very high power consuming system you will have to have complex cooling mechanisms like liquid cooling so in in the last course the dvd course you also talked about how qualcomm chips the the most advanced application processors actually tout about or or, or you know claim uh, good efficiency because they are using liquid cooling technology so as so power is therefore very important performance i think all of us very well understand why is performance important so, so we can say performance mainly includes functionality and uh, the frequency of operation so the functionality that we need should be as it is and the frequency of operation the desired frequency of operation at which the chip should uh, operate yeah that is also fixed hmm so why is it important Uh, sir, I should keep it in sight. Uh, sir, performance ultimately boils down to the user experience. So, uh, if the higher is the performance, so we can uh, operate the chips at a higher frequency and then get the results at a faster rate. Hmm. The throughput would be the throughput would be higher. The latency that the that the customer or the user experience will be lesser. So, overall user experience improves. He or she is ready to pay a higher price. Hmm? You are ready to pay a higher price for a higher. higher performing intel chipset is it not 
so performance also yes. is important that means that what kind of revenue we will earn and area why is area important oh vaishnav is saying area is gold in vlsi good to reduce the cost to reduce the cost why why does area reduce the cost we we get less chip area so mm -hmm. the silicon substrate is costly so yeah. okay if you have lesser chip and area then we if we, uh, we reduce the area then we can increase the lots of feature by adding some more transistors okay we can we can do more integration yes what else so the size of the device is also decreases actually uh, so the, like faster uh, device will latency will also decrease sir i think hmm interesting so, sorry shivendra sir cost reduce cost, cost reduce. reduce yeah that is what i am asking how does cost reduce when you reduce area So Kazi said something. Kazi said, "If you have lesser area, we can have more dice. More dice on the same. More dice on the same business. Because the cost of the wafer remains constant. If you can have more dice on the same wafer, you have more selling chips. Additionally, uh, we also discussed and we also reviewed that yield is inversely proportional to area. So if the area is less, then what happens? Your yield improves." Yield improves means that if there were ninety uh, out of hundred dies that were functional earlier, now ninety two would be functional with a two percent improvement in yield. So uh, not only do you get more chips per wafer, you get more functional chips per wafer. So overall profitability increases significantly. Therefore, we say that area is gold in VLSI. But for memories, we will say something else. What would we say? So diamond, yes. For memories, area is diamond. Why? Because you see, memories are everywhere. In fact, in advanced SOCs, uh, for the likes of uh, uh, you know the chips that are used in um, self-driving cars, for example, hmm? for advanced SOCs or for uh, even advanced processors, up to seventy percent or even eighty percent of chip area is from memories. So, if eighty percent of your chip area is memory, then to save area in memories is still more important, and that is why when we talk of memories, we say area is diamond. Hmm. So we're changing the paradigm that area is area becomes all the much more important uh, parameter when we talk of memories. Is that clear? Any questions? Yes. 